You know how to write a basic join in SQL, but there are a few things you can do in SQL to make them even better and way easier to write. I'll show you what they are in this video. When we have two columns in two different tables with the same name, and we want to select this, we'll get an error about the column being ambiguous. So we qualify the column by adding the table name in front of the column. That's what we've done in this query. We do this to the select clause. The join clause already has the table names. If we have other clauses like a where clause or an order by, we would need to specify the table names there as well. This is a lot of code and a lot of repetition. We can reduce the amount of code we write in our SQL statement by using a concept called a table alias. A table alias is a name that we give to our table that exists just within our query. We can refer to the table by this new name anywhere in the query. Why would we do this? Well, we give our table an alias that is much shorter than the full name. This makes it easier to write, but we are still able to understand the query. The common advice, and what I recommend, is using a table alias of one or two characters. Short enough so it's easy to type, but long enough so you can tell what it is. I usually use the first letter of the table name or add on another letter to make it unique if there are two tables with similar names. In this example, I'll give the customer table an alias of C. We can do this by adding the as keyword after the table name in the from clause, then the name of the alias, which is C. We can do the same for the account status table, giving it the alias of A. Now that we have done that, we can use these aliases throughout our query instead of the full name. This means that in the join clause, we can replace the word customer with the letter C, and we can replace the account status table here with the letter A. Next, we can update the select clause to use these aliases. We use C for customer and A for account status. Our query is now ready. There is less code as we have used table aliases. We can run the query and see our results here. It shows a list of customers and their account statuses. This is the same result as the query before we added the table aliases. Using table aliases is a helpful way to improve your queries by making it easier to write your queries, but still keep them readable. They can also help with autocomplete. Anytime you enter the table alias, then a dot, you should see the autocomplete feature in your SQL editor pop up with a list of columns in the table. This makes it easier to add columns to your query. The second way to improve your joins is to use another feature that makes your results easier to understand. Take this query here. We run this and we see the results. We see data from the customer table and then the status value from the account status table. The first column shown is called ID. We know by looking at the query that it comes from the customer table, but we can't tell that by looking at the results. It would be helpful if we could give it a more descriptive name. And in SQL, we can do just that. We can use something called a column alias, which is a name that we give to our column in the results of our query. We can give it an alias and the results will show this as the column header. To do this, we add the as keyword after the column that we want to apply a new name to in the select clause. Then we add the name that we want to apply to this column. In this example, we want to make it clear that this is the customer ID. So we'll call it customer underscore ID. Then we have a comma and the query continues. Our query is ready. We run it and see the results. The data in the results here is the same. The only difference is the name of the column in the results, which is now customer ID instead of ID. This is a helpful feature to improve not only your joins, but any SQL that you write. It helps to add clarity to columns when they could come from many tables. Writing joins can make your queries longer. You have your join clause with the columns to be joined. You then have extra columns in the select clause. You could also have other clauses like a where clause, group by or order by. A good way to manage this is to format your SQL code to make it easier to read. And that's the third tip for this video, format your code. Most SQL editors have a built-in code formatter. You can use this feature or format it yourself, it's up to you. Personally, I usually manually format my code, but if it's a messy script and I need to clean it up quickly, I use the built-in formatter. In my SQL Workbench, the feature is called Beautify. You can click this button on the toolbar to format the code. By default, it formats the current query or where your cursor is. I can click this button and the code is formatted. 
In other editors, it might be available on the toolbar or in the right-click menu in the code editor or as a menu item. It could also be named Format SQL or SQL Formatter or something like that. It might not format it exactly as you like, but it's usually better than no formatting at all. Formatting your code can make it easier to read and understand, especially as your queries get longer and start joining to multiple tables. Tip number four is helpful when you start writing your query. As you start writing, you might not know what the tables look like or what columns you want. One thing that can help is to add all of the columns from the table first. This can help you understand the data and see the differences in each row across the columns. I'll show you this by writing this query from scratch, getting data from both the customer and account status table. We select all columns from both tables. When the query is ready, we run it. The results are here. We can see all of the columns in both tables. There are two ID columns, as we know, but one is the customer ID and one is the account status ID. We can also see both of the columns from the join in the results. This is a good start. Once we have the query showing the rows that we want, we can focus on the columns that you want or don't want to see. We do this by updating the select clause to remove the columns from the query. This can help you with writing a new query or joining another table to an existing query. If you really want to improve your SQL, check out my online course, SQL Simplified. It's my online course where you learn the fundamentals of SQL, including joins, but so much more. You can learn and see demos for the four common SQL vendors that I teach, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, and Postgres. You'll learn more about joins, such as joining three tables, and other ways to use joins, such as joining a table to itself. You'll learn about more concepts such as filtering rows, ordering results, functions, aggregating data, subqueries, and much more. If you don't know what any of that means, that's okay, as I'll explain what they are, why you would use these techniques, and how to use them. Check out the link in the description to learn more. Hopefully this video helped you improve your queries that work with multiple tables and you've learned something from it. Thanks for watching.